Hi. After all the trouble that I've had with the Vodafone Gigafast fibre connection, it really brought home how important having a decent internet connection is. I've been working from home since March last year, and I do plan to work from home for the foreseeable future, at least 80% of the time, and that looks to be uh, something that a lot of people are also planning to do. And I haven't actually got a solution yet for the Vodafone uh, problems, uh, but they have allowed me to end my contract. So basically I'm getting disconnected at the end of May. Uh, I don't actually have to pay for anything apart from um, one month, I think is what they've agreed with me. But basically if they sort the fault within that 30 days, I'll probably reinstate the contract because having that 900-900 symmetrical connection will be really useful. But I still do have the Virgin internet connection. And I'm looking today at, obviously, once the situation sorted out, I will only have one ISP. I'm not going to pay for two. But I did think about having a 4G failover, um, just so that if something does happen, I can still get my work done, upload videos, all that kind of stuff. So what we've got here is the Microtik SXT LTE 6 kit. So what this is, it's an external device. You can mount this externally on a mast. Um, so this kind of clips onto the back here. And then you have a Jubilee or uh, a hose type clip that goes around and clamps that to your mast outside. It has a directional antenna built into this. And then it also has some hardware that allows you to run router OS, um, which is Microtik's firmware. So this can effectively work as a fully functional router. Now, I don't plan to use it with that configuration um, with this as a router. I plan to feed this into my PFSense box so that it can switch over or maybe load balance uh, if needed. Um, but obviously, having that functionality in there is extremely useful because it does mean that if you wanted to, you could just plug this directly into your laptop if you were working from home and free yourselves from the potential issues that you have with the internet connections that we have in the UK. So what I want to do is I want to try and get this up and running outside today. Um, so I've already put a SIM card in here. There's a little flap here which then opens up uh, and you can see we've got two Ethernet connections and then we've got two SIM card slots. There's one here and there's one back there. They're a little bit tricky to get to. I have already put a SIM in here and I think I mentioned uh, in the previous video, you can actually get some fairly low cost SIM cards. Um, the one that I'm using in particular this time is from Smarty, which runs on the three network. I've had three on my phone for a long, long time and never had any issues whatsoever. And they have some really quite good price plans. For now, I've just gone for the unlimited £20 package because uh, I want to be able to use this properly. But you can scale it right back. And I think for Smarty, they also have some tariffs where if you don't use all of your data, you get cash back. So in effect, you just have a very low fee per month to keep it working. Uh, and then if you do use the data, then it costs a little bit more. So um, I do think these are quite good. And you tend to get reasonably decent speeds with three. However, I do appear to have made a slight error of judgment with this particular board. Um, I should have read the the details a little bit better. It turns out, unfortunately, with the Microtik hardware, the carrier aggregation, which is the ability to use some of the different bands on LTE and aggregate them so you get a faster connection, uh, is somewhat limited. We'll find out today what that really means. Um, and I'm not intending this to be my primary internet connection, but certainly on my mobile phone, for example, you can do carrier aggregation on band one and band three, which means that you can get incredible speeds, like faster than a lot of the standard internet connections that you can get. With this one, we can't carry or aggregate band one and three. You can only uh, aggregate band three and some of the other higher ones, or band one and then some of the higher ones, but the one and three you can't do together. So there's a bit of a limitation there. The other one is that this only has a 100 megabit ethernet connection partly because this one supports passive PoE as well as active PoE. There is another more recent device that has a gigabit connection but only supports active PoE. It also has a much more directional antenna. But this was quite keenly priced and I actually ended up picking this one up on eBay 
brand new for about fifty pounds. So actually, the the investment is not much uh, in this instance. So if this one really doesn't work out, I may think about getting the better model. But um, I think this will probably do the job anyway. I'm only looking at this for uh, a backup type thing. So I think maybe we'll just have a quick look inside if we can get this apart. So it did come apart fairly straightforwardly. It's kind of just clipped together. It's designed in such a way that it's not entirely waterproof, but any water that does get in should channel itself down to the bottom and drip out the bottom end. Um, and it's not completely sealed so that if there is any condensation that gets built up in here, then it can easily get out rather than uh, damaging the electronics. So this is designed for outdoor use, uh, but it's certainly not like completely waterproof. If you were spraying water jets at it, it probably wouldn't survive. But on the front, you can see we've got our directional antenna. And then that goes into the back here. And basically, we've got two feeds into our LTE modem. So this is the modem. It's the R11E LTE6, which is Microtik's highest spec 4G modem. Uh, this is actually the limiting factor for that carrier aggregation problem. And unfortunately, they don't have anything suitable uh, that gets around that. I think I'd have to look at some of the Huawei offerings uh, to be able to do exactly what I want to be able to do. Um, there may be some firmware updates which... Uh, address that I don't know but just based on the spec sheet it doesn't look like it quite supports what I was after. Other than that there's not a huge amount on here. Uh, we've got some circuitry at the bottom here um, associated with the power over Ethernet and also some voltage regulators. Uh, the voltage regulators are up here nothing too exciting just a couple of book converters uh, and then a synchronous book converter just here. Uh, and then we've got our system on the chip, some flash, um, sorry that's RAM, uh, that's the flash down here and not a lot else, so there's not a huge amount going on here, to be honest. It's all fairly well integrated, as you would expect. Uh, you know, uh, modems and routers these days are so integrated onto tiny chips that you don't need a whole lot of hardware, so there's not a lot to tell here. Uh, there are some LEDs here, which on the back give an indication as to the signal strength, but you can get all of that information from the web interface from what I can see. So, uh, yeah, nothing too surprising on here. Uh, but the antenna is quite interesting. Uh, the other device that I was talking about that had the higher spec um, interface has a much more directional antenna. Uh, we'll see how we get on with this one. I'm not terribly far away. I think I'm about uh, two kilometers away from the mast, but it's not clear line of sight from where I'm going to sight this. So uh, it may be that this one doesn't quite perform as well as it could do. So that's now pointing at the transmitter that gives me the best signal levels. It turns out it's not actually the closest one. The closest one doesn't actually cover this area. They're quite directional antennas and I actually get no signal from that one whatsoever. I would have liked to have mounted it all the way up here on the chimney uh, on that mass there where I've got the other antennas. You've got the GPS ones just sitting there. But it's a little bit difficult to get to just the ladder and I don't want to build the scaffolding. Uh, the chimney is all the way in set quite a long way so it's quite difficult to get to with just a ladder. Um, so this will probably do the job. Now unfortunately with this slightly lower location it does mean that the signal is going to be attenuated somewhat by this house across the road but I don't think that should cause us too many issues. So there it is all mounted up let's have a look at the web interface. When you first log in to the configuration web page this is what you're presented with and it kind of shows what's going on with the system. The first thing they recommend you do is check for firmware updates and I've already done that it's all at the latest version, but it does use the 4G connection, so that needs to be working at this point. So then in terms of the signal parameters, it's not too bad here at all. It's verging between good and excellent. Certainly could be a little bit better, uh, but the received signal power is minus 81 dBm. Anything between 80 and uh, 90 is considered good. Uh, greater than minus 80 dBm is considered excellent. The RSSI, which is the received signal strength indicator, is minus 51 and anything above minus 65 dBm is considered excellent there. And then finally, one of the important parameters here is the uh, signal to interference plus noise ratio. And uh, we've got that at about 18 dB. Anything between 13 and 20 is considered good, greater than 20 is excellent. So a little bit more gain on the antenna probably would have brought us into the excellent region, but we should be getting reasonable speeds given these parameters. If you click on WebFig, then you get the full router OS interface. It's very similar to the Microtik uh, router OS router that I reviewed quite a long time ago now, which I no longer use. 
uh, but everything is kind of similar to that. Uh, we've got a tab here which shows you more detail about the LTE interface and at the moment here everything is at the default setting so all of the network modes are available, all of the bands are still enabled and it seems to have connected fine. Further down the page we've got some more details about the connection so some more signal strength parameters, some details about the bands that it's connected to and then also some traffic information including some traffic graphs. Now you'll see at the moment it's connected to primary band 1 and nothing on the carrier aggregation band and it's quite normal for it to only connect to one band until such a time where you need that extra speed but I've been playing with this for about a week now and I am unable to get it to connect to any second band even though carrier aggregation definitely is something that is enabled at this mast and on this network because I can do the same thing on my mobile phone and it quite happily connects to two bands. With the default setting, at the moment it's connected to band 1, sometimes it connects to band 3 which has slightly higher bandwidth, but as far as I understand this is controlled by the mast, not by the modem, and it will do it based on the congestion basically. Um, so at the moment it looks like band 1 is the least congested. Let's have a look at some of the speed tests. So here we are on speedtest.net. We'll leave the configuration page open in the background just in case we see anything happening on the carrier aggregation band. But let's try a speed test. And so there we go. Those are the speeds. 9 meg down, 7 meg up. And these are pretty poor speeds and I'm not fully understanding what's going on. If I do this on my mobile phone, I get speeds significantly higher than this. What I'm going to try doing now is forcing... A different band to be used so we'll try it on band 3 and see what happens. I've disabled band 1 but left all the others active that means it's decided to connect to band 3 with a bit more bandwidth here. Let's do a speed test once again and we get much better download in this case so 25 megabits per second download. The upload was doing pretty well and then all of a sudden it dropped so I have a feeling that this mast is a little bit congested on this particular network but that doesn't make complete sense to me because I am able to get much better speeds on my phone even though I'm connected to the same mobile phone mast and it does make me wonder whether there is some other limitation with this piece of hardware or that I'm incorrectly configuring it. Now one other thing that I did do is I actually went to the location of the mobile phone tower with my phone to try and do a comparison of speeds so that I could see how much difference it actually made by being 1.8 kilometers away from it at home. So up here you can see the speeds that I was able to achieve when I was right outside the tower. And these speeds are really quite impressive. 153 megabits per second down and 55 megabits per second up. They did vary a little bit but it was pretty much this on average. Uh, reasonably high ping but I think that's quite standard for mobile phone networks. Interestingly the closer you get to the mast at, at certain point these speeds start to drop off rapidly until where you're pretty much underneath the mast. Uh, you can't even complete a speed test despite it saying that you've got full signal on the signal indicator. But what is a little bit confusing is why I can't get anywhere near these speeds at home. It does suggest that potentially that higher gain antenna could give us a little bit more download speed but fundamentally I think there's something either wrong with my configuration or something that isn't compatible with this particular modem. And even though I am quite tempted to try the alternate MicroTik device with the higher gain antenna and the faster CPU, it's still based on the same modem. So unless I can find out exactly what I've done wrong here, I'm going to be a little bit stuck. That said, I think it's fine for a backup system. I'm not intending to use this as my primary internet connection, but it would be nice to have it working somewhere near as well as on my phone. So if any of you got any ideas or experience with these pieces of equipment, then uh, do leave a comment down below as to something that I might have missed. But anyway, I thought that might be useful to some people who are thinking about using one of these MicroTik devices. I know some people have similar issues with some of the Huawei devices as well, so I don't, don't think it's just limited uh, to these MicroTik modems. Uh, but yeah, if you've got any experience with these, please leave a comment down below. But anyway, I think that's about it for today. As usual, if you've got any thoughts or comments, leave them in the comments section down below. Big thank you to all my Patreon supporters, and until next time, thanks for watching.